Hi, I'm Dr Ian Britton, an academic who studies volunteer policing internationally, and I'm delighted today to begin our series of interviews on policing TV with experts and leaders around the world of volunteer policing. And there's no better place to start in terms of experts on volunteer policing than Professor Ross Wolf. Based in Florida, USA, Ross is a leading expert on volunteer policing internationally. He's also a volunteer police leader himself, responsible for the reserve unit of Orange County Sheriff's Office. Ross served six years as the elected president of the Volunteer Law Enforcement Officers Alliance before stepping back from that role last year. The Alliance is an international association that brings volunteer policing together from around the world. So thank you very much for joining us, Ross. To, to begin, can you just give oh, us I'm a... I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Ian. Excellent, excellent. To begin with, can you just give us a brief history of how you came to be involved in volunteer policing? Certainly. I actually started as a volunteer police officer um, many years ago. Uh, I was in a uh, career that I really enjoyed doing, but I um, had always wanted to, to be in law enforcement. And a friend of mine talked me into doing a ride along. Uh, with her. She was a deputy with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. She she invited me to do a ride along. I was happy to do it. I went out and did a ride along with her. And I had never heard of volunteer policing until uh, she told me about that opportunity. So I jumped at the opportunity, the chance. I um, went through the what, what was then called the Auxiliary Academy uh, and uh, field training with the Sheriff's Office. And then um, started working as a volunteer police officer for about four years. I then went full time. Um, and we find that a lot of volunteer police around the world use volunteer policing as kind of a stepping stone to get into uh, full time policing or or at least to, to test the waters to see if it's something that might be of interest to them. So that's what I did. Uh, and I went full time. Um, We'll, we'll talk more about uh, what what happened after that. But after I worked five years as a full time deputy uh, and a detective with the sheriff's office, uh, I earned my doctorate degree and um, really wanted to um, to get into the professorate, into academe and decided to go back to being a volunteer police officer. So uh, I went full circle, started as a volunteer auxiliary certified, went full time, uh, full certification and am currently uh, fully certified as a reserve officer, which in Florida means I have all the same exact responsibilities, training uh, and field training as full time. Thank you. And um, um, the reserve unit that you now lead in Orange County Sheriff's Office in Florida is internationally recognized. Can you give can you just give us a sense of how the unit operates? Yes, uh, we have about 80 law enforcement volunteers in the Orange County Sheriff's Office Reserve Unit. Um, those 80 come from uh, basically two different main areas. Those that have never been uh, and probably don't want to be full time and those that have been or want to go full time. So we have those two those two different types of people. Uh, the first is very community oriented individuals who do this as a mostly as a volunteer uh, function. Um, uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, there are some opportunities for pay with the Orange County Sheriff's Office Reserve Unit, although most of what we do is for free. Um, but the other half um, comes from full-time law enforcement or wants to go into full-time law enforcement. Uh, and those individuals have served or want to serve in a full-time capacity uh, and the great thing about that is that our training allows us to go from full time to volunteer policing and then again back from volunteer policing to full time if you wanted to do that. Uh, or that's your stepping stone and you want to move in that direction. Uh, it takes a lot less um, additional training that you have to do once you become a full timer if you go from volunteer. Uh, it takes more if you want to start as auxiliary like I did, which is lesser training than the full time uh, personnel have. But uh, if you have the full certification and you are a volunteer and you want to become a full-time police officer, uh, there's there's very little you have to do other than submitting a memo and possibly um, some makeup training, usually things around HR required um, uh, classes that you have to go to uh, because now you're going to be an employee of the agency instead of a volunteer. But our unit um, functions 
a lot like many units around the world in that we uh, ask our, our volunteers to help with patrol, largely, uh, to be out to assist and supplement what happens in patrol. But also our unit is responsible for working a, a large amount of community relations events, things from parades to festivals to uh, music events. Uh, our unit is asked to assist and um, go to those um, events to help out for free. And do your volunteer officers have an opportunity to involve in more specialist areas of policing? And are there any areas that they are excluded from being involved in? That's a great question. and. Um, I think that that's one of the great things about the Orange County Sheriff's Office is that if you put in for and you get the training required to be part of a specialist unit, you can participate. Um, we have had um, reserve volunteers serve as volunteer medics on SWAT team, but we haven't had any SWAT operators and there's a good reason for that because SWAT, of course, requires so much training, but also has to be available at all times for call-outs. And it doesn't really fit well with the volunteer role. Uh, however, just about every other specialist unit within the Orange County Sheriff's Office has had volunteers assist in one way or another. Um, everything from pilots, uh, we've had reserve, uh, who's, reserve deputies who serve as pilots for our helicopters, uh, we've uh, dive team members, bike patrol, mounted patrol, uh, marine patrol, which is boats, um, just about everything in, um, that a full-timer does, reserves uh, can do and, and have participated in in the past. Thank you. One, one of the experiences we have in the UK is that our volunteer special constables often join up but don't stay for very long, so often the volunteer careers are quite short. Is, is, is that your experience in Orange County, or do you find that your volunteers tend to be longer serving? I think we have a little bit of both, um, Dr. Britton. I think that um, uh, we do have those that come in for just a short period of time, especially those that are hoping to go full-time, uh, and after they get the experience that's needed, they go full-time uh, in a short amount of time. Um, but we also have long-serving volunteer police, and those, those are individuals who come in and serve for 20, 30, 40, or longer years uh, in, the, in a volunteer policing role. Um, I think coming from the full-time side, um, their, their tenure with our unit is not as long as our community volunteer side of folks. Uh, because they've already had a full career in policing. Uh, so they may do five, 10, maybe a couple more than 10 years after that with us, uh, and then um, decide it's time to fully retire. Um, but um, generally speaking, um, most of the folks who come to our unit from uh, from from full time spend, spend a good amount of time. They don't le usually leave right away, but we've had that happen too. Um, and the community side tends to stay pretty long. Once they once they get in and they understand what it is and and that they want to be a part of this as much as they thought they did when they joined, um, we have them stay for a long time. Thinking more strategically beyond the Orange County context, I, I know law enforcement in the USA is quite a, a complex picture, many thousands of agencies, quite a wide variation in practice. Can can you just give a sense of what that looks like from the volunteer policing point of view? How much do we know about what volunteer policing looks like across the states? Is it different from one state to another? And are there some gaps in our knowledge around that? Yeah, I think, well, there's gaps in the, in our knowledge of what volunteer police are doing worldwide. Uh, and we're trying to narrow that a little bit, uh, but there are certainly gaps in what we know about volunteer policing in the United States. Uh, there are approximately uh, 18,000 law enforcement agencies in the United States. Of those 18,000, a percentage of them use volunteers and reserves, but there's no standardized 
data collection method to, to have each of those agencies report on how many they have, what type of training they have, um, what responsibilities they have. And so we've had to um, really look at this and, and yourself, as well as other academic uh, researchers in this area, myself included, and some other folks, including, um, as you know, Dr. Adam Dobrin um, from Florida Atlantic University, and Dr. Uh, uh, Fei Kin Che from from Malaysia, um, but there's others also involved uh, in this in this work, who are looking at not only what police do throughout the world, but trying to get a better grasp on what volunteer police do in the United States. The U.S. really has a gradient line of volunteer police. On one end of the spectrum are the volunteers like myself who have full police powers, who've been through all the training, uh, who um, have all the same responsibilities as a law enforcement officer when they're out working. Um, and then the other end of that gradient spectrum are the folks who really are uniformed in some way, but more of a police presence and um, have the authority only to call the police if they see something. On that gradient, though, there's all different levels of police forces in between. So we have some forces that have half the police training and can do some of the things that police do, that they would be in the middle of that gradient, uh, and then every point in between. And we don't know the answer to that question, and, and I think that's what you're asking. We just don't know what that looks like as a as a picture, a nationwide picture in the United States. Uh, and we're really just nailing that down for a worldwide picture as well. Yes, you mentioned the worldwide picture. Can, can you tell us a bit about the Volunteer Law Enforcement Officers Alliance, how it came about and, and what work it does? Yes, so the Volunteer Law Enforcement Officers Alliance, VLEOA, uh, is an international nonprofit USA-based organization uh, that really tries to bring together international folks uh, who work in this field, this area, uh, and um, share best practices. That's really the best way to describe what the um, mission of the, of the organization is. The leadership of the organization will also assist uh, police leaders, full-time police leaders, in looking at whether volunteer policing programs are right for their agencies, um, in doing uh, an, some analysis on things that are going right or wrong with their units, their agencies, volunteer program. Uh, but the idea behind the organization is to get leaders and those who are practicing together and look at what is going on elsewhere in the country or the world that might be adopted to make volunteer policing better. I'm going to give you an example of something that I saw, Dr. Britton, when I was in uh, the UK with a special constabulary there um, that I've been trying to bring back to my agency and to various other organizations here in the US, and that's the employee supported policing. I really think there's a better way to recognize the companies, the organizations that allow their personnel to serve in roles for their community as volunteer police officers. And we just don't have anything like that here. Uh, so um, I've been pushing to see how we might adopt even a, even a piece of that uh, to recognize the organizations that, that allow their, their employees to serve in this kind of role. Uh, and, um, and I got that through my contacts with Volunteer Law Enforcement Officer Alliance. There's many more examples of that, but that's the one that really hit home for me. I'd like to see that happen. And how long has the Volunteer Law Enforcement Officers Alliance been functioning? And, and they, they, they have an annual conference once a year, which brings people together to, to build on the work. That's correct. Um, VLEOA uh, was established in 2009. So 2024 will be the 15 year anniversary of the organization. Um, yes, they have an annual conference, uh, obviously with the exception of COVID um, getting in the way, uh, they've had uh, conferences for about the last 12 or 13 years. Uh, and those are 
largely held so far, at least in North America, although we've had one conference in England. Though, as I said, those conferences are, are really a way to bring together both full-time and part-time leaders of police organizations uh, who work with volunteer. So the, the full-timers who work with volunteer policing, as well as the volunteers who are working in volunteer policing, um, and to, to share those best practices. We, we do have speakers come to those conferences. We do some training of some kind at those conferences uh, to, to see what the local uh, host organization does in regards to training that might be different from our own home and home organization. Uh, but um, we we really um, we really find the best the best opportunity for in, increasing the how good our own organization does is by talking to those about specific problems we're having and trying to get others to to find out or to find out from others if if those um, problems are consistent between those between organizations. So 